Hi friends, happy epiphany. Hard to believe that Christmas season is drawn to a close. Now, I don't know what all of you are like, but I think most of you probably have 90% of your decorations down even before the 12th day of Christmas. There are some of you that probably have half of your decorations up. There are some of you that probably still have your decorations up, like me. If you're in the category like me, welcome to the club. Everybody else, strive to have all your decorations up until the epiphany. All right, let's talk about this. Now, what we see here, friends, is that the Magi are going on this journey after getting the getting this permission from King Herod, which, of course, he was going to betray them. And, of course, they were instructed to go elsewhere. What we see here, my friends, is that Jesus gives us something really special. And regardless of what account you hear during the Epiphany, it's still the same. The same, me- the same message is clear. Jesus gives himself to us. Like the Magi, when we discover Jesus, we can be filled with great joy. Gift giving has its origins in the account of the Magi giving gifts to Jesus. Now, if we look at the gifts, gold, it was considered a precious metal, and it's supposed to symbolize wealth, basically. Frankincense, the key word is incense, and if you've been to high masses, whether you've attended mass or you've been an altar server or altar boy in the traditional Latin rite funerals and whatever the case is, frankincense will let off a little smoke and it will be offered up. Then you look at myrrh. It's kind of like a perfume that is commonly used at funerals. That's commonly used for burial. These three gifts foretold basically are pre- Basically, I call them like foretelling of what Jesus is about is about to is about that is what's going to happen with Jesus, what he's destined for. I think that if there's something we could take away from this account here in the Gospel of Matthew, is that the prophets, when he they foretell the coming of the Savior, that is going to free is that's going to free the Israelites. It has been made this word that these prophets have been foretelling in the desert was made flesh and is now dwelling among them. And it still dwells among us too. I think many of us can recall the times when we were growing up, even hearing stories of Christmas past or even stories of relatives, friends growing up of the example of gift giving. You know, we think of this one gift we always desired for Christmas, or even our birthday too. Well, Jesus can have both, so don't worry about it. So can you. (laughs) But I think if there's one thing we can understand with gift giving, is that there's something that, maybe that was on your heart, that you've always wanted. Maybe you wanted this, I I mean, I don't know what people get these days. Like it's mostly, you know, gadgets or, or tickets to a sporting event, but whatever it is. Something that heart, your heart's long desire. And it became true on Christmas. But I think also we have to understand the reality of what we learn from the, the three magi. The reality is these three, they go on a long journey. They canvas afar, as we hear from the song, the carol, We Three Kings. And they have to journey through every mountain, hill, valley, until they finally made it to Bethlehem. And they bore gifts. And they prostrated themselves every time a gift was placed before Jesus because they acknowledged the holy presence of the infant Jesus as they paid him homage. I think what the Magi also teaches us too is that 
we are on a journey ourselves. And this journey is going to have twists and turns. This journey is for the faint of heart. This journey is for people that want it bad and want it so bad that they want to strive for it, that they want to work for it. Just like someone that wants to go for that promotion at, at their job or anything of that nature. We must strive to be with Jesus in heaven. Today we have to take that first step in answering that call to be part of something that is great, that is holy, and is something that is life-giving. Jesus would eventually give his life for all of us when he suffered and died for our sins so we can be free. And as Jesus grew into adulthood, he would call people to follow him. He will call people to follow a path that is greater than themselves. He will call people to give up everything that they have just to follow him, to detach themselves from one world and attach themselves more to this world that is to come. The Magi have laid that groundwork. And we are called to be filled with that great joy, just as we've had it during the first Christmas. So friends, as the Christmas season comes to an end, let us seek Jesus. A challenge I could have for all of you as we wind down what's left of Christmas, visit the manger at your parish and kneel before Jesus. Now, you don't have to give him gold, frankincense, or myrrh or anything like that, but just give him you. Give him yourself. Tell him what your heart desires. Pray for your loved ones. Let us be filled with joy when we go before Jesus. Happy Epiphany. God bless.